Hello, my soccer universe. Well, that was a little bit more like it, especially when we look at League A and League B. I think more goals were scored with more exciting games this time around. Probably, you know, the hangover from all these playoffs and so on ended. I don't know. I just enjoyed, especially, uh, no, both Tuesday and Wednesday, the award I watched, I enjoyed a lot more. And so, let's go right to it. Before, I'm wearing a proper black Austria jersey that's a uh, match issued for 2006-2007 um, uh, basically the same thing as the Italy jersey except it is in Austria configuration with nice eagle on there this is how I expect uh, Austria black jersey there's even some red on the back not this turquoise gold or whatever talk about Austria in a bit. Let's go straight to uh, the t um, Tuesday games because I told you in my preview I'm not so excited about either Germany, Switzerland or Ukraine, Spain and I was not super attentively watching. I was actually sitting here in my office uh, preparing some stuff for the Champions League and the Europa League and so on and I had the game on. This was a fairly entertaining game. Um, defending optional, so if you like defensive soccer, it's probably not was not the best thing to watch. But everything else, uh, the Swiss came out storming, and probably should have taken early lead before the fifth minute. But when Gavranovic heads it in, a uh, uh, fifth minute old, the writing was on the wall for Germany, and Yogi Löw was surely a little bit on the sweat. Was waiting. I think for me the second goal uh, for, by Freuler where uh, Seferovic with a great ball that I thought uh, Neuer should intercept. I mean it was already in the build up how they lost the ball, the Germans. But what Freuler then does coming out and giving it a sweet touch, kind of a panenka, to pull it in the, in the internet was really really nice. But what is Rüdiger doing on the line uh, looks very uncoordinated. I think you can clear this a whole lot easier. Fortunately for the Germans, two minutes later, Timo Werner pulls one back and I also have to say, this one did not look unsavable. Uh, I'm not so sold on Jan Sommer. I think Jan Sommer is playing because he is good with his foot, but then he makes many mistakes and so on. And even with his foot, I mean, we saw against Spain, so I was also not that uh, excited about that, but then it's one, two. And German is in the game and fortunately for them, I mean, they didn't really try it, uh, kind of, you know, win. we cannot lose to Switzerland at home. This just cannot happen. And um, Havertz intercepts a ball and runs. It's not really a tech that can put in the net in the 55th to make it 2-2. Then Gavranovic comes back with uh, the German defense. I mean, Gavranovic is free that the ball falls to him. He just needs to... Uh, smash it home it was really 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 bad but that actually ended all the swiss attacking moves and it was then germany who three minutes later come back so it was a really crazy five minutes harvest gavranovic and then gnabry probably with the pick of the bunch but after team of Werner assist he just back heels it into the net um very nicely and i thought then that germany probably will win this game but for some reason they cannot find that the Swiss can hang on and it's 3-3 which is a credible result for Swiss Switzerland which are a little bit in trouble uh, considering the table situation um, and they were hoping to get something out of that if not a win however the other problem for the Swiss is that Ukraine pulls out a win over Spain with one shot on goal but it was not an undeserved win. Uh, yes, Spain had more of the ball, Spain was controlling, but uh, Spain is toothless. And I don't know, I, they can, uh, they seemingly cannot use them. I mean, the biggest weapons at the moment seems to be Adama Traore and Ansu Fati. Um, but they don't play for them. And that for me is, 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 is a trouble. And all the strikers, you know, they would need a good striker on front. Let's put it that. Let's simply put it that way. Ukraine already had a huge chance uh, right after the half. Then uh, they get the goal on uh, counter-attack where the hair is way too far off his line. And uh, Yamalen can play a wonderful through ball uh, to Zigankov, who is then one on one kind of with the game from far out can just put it into the net and Ukraine gets a really, really important win for them. Um, 
Another shock win was kind of Montenegro's one to loss to Luxembourg. Lux Ivanovic gives um, Mont Montenegro the lead, but um, Muratovic can equalize for Lux Luxembourg. And Luxembourg actually um, has a little bit more of the game. And Sinani in the 86th gets the winning goal, uh, which is the first loss for Montenegro, as, as we'll see, means that now Luxembourg is first in the table. Uh, and then stops, stops option completely disintegrated. There was uh, one red uh, for a Luxembourg player and two red, uh, one straight and one a, ye a yellow red for Montenegro players. So ended on a sour note. Malta wins 1-0 at Latvia. Yes, I forgot Cyprus and Azerbaijan, which I think was played in Albania for political reasons. Not. Yeah, I think Turkey, Turkey, Greece, and whatever. Fairy Islands beat Andorra relatively convincing. Uh, Olsen uh, makes two goals in the 90s and 33rd and 36. Hansen misses even Palace. It could, could be more, more decisive. But as we'll see, the Fairy Islands are well, well on their way into League C. And then, in many ways, the result of the evening was Liechtenstein's nil, uh, nil nil draw to San Marino. San Marino gets a point. Not only that, they were the better team. I think they hit twice the woodwork. They should have won that game. San Marino gets a point. I actually would love to see San Marino get a win. Uh, they s it just doesn't seem right that they are always losing, lo losing, losing, losing. And in the Nations League, you basically you should get your points sooner or later. And then let's move to Wednesday, where, um, yes, I watched the goal zone, basically all the League A and League B games switching back and forth. So I saw a ton load of goals. I was about to say something uh, nasty. Uh, but, you know, I, can't, I, I had to watch some high highlights and uh, read a little bit up, up to get a feel for the games. The big one, or one of the two big ones, it was Croatia against France, where France play and can I say again, I uh, I love those France, the new France home jerseys, and I don't know why they have to play against the ugliest jerseys out there in this group. Uh, I take out Sweden for now, but I don't like the Croatia home jersey. I really don't like the Portugal away jersey. All the other, all the for the blue uh, France jersey are totally marred by those. They played a really good first half, uh, where Griezmann, was very badly defended by v Vida, and if you look at the goal, how Griezmann separates himself, and suddenly is very free in the box, and the ball even falls to him, and he just needs to put it in the roof of the net, 1-0. Uh, Mbappé misses the open net a little bit later, and I was thinking, yeah, he, yeah, he gets there with his large gait, and you know, kind of uh, also a lanky figure, I always thought that uh, Mbappé is much taller than he is. This guy is not even that tall, uh, but... A great player nonetheless. I don't need to be told to be a great player. Uh, Maradona, of course, shows this. Uh, or Messi, you know, take it. Take it. But I, I was struck by how non-tall he is. In Towards the end of the first half, Croatia actually got themselves back in the, in the game and had good chances. Yes, France played uh, for a first half very well. In the second half, there was not too much. It was actually Croatia who then got a very... Uh, deserved equalizer through Vlasic after assist from Brekalo. I mean, the assist was basically a ball across uh, the box, uh, in, ahead of the box. Uh, and you thought, yeah, this is actually overall deserved, but they are not careful enough. And it just takes a Pogba pass to Dinia, who then puts it across the goal mouth to Mbappé, who has no problem in the 79th to pull it home. Croatia probably would have deserved an equalizer, but did not get one. Uh, Portugal though, and we see it, the two big guys are marching uh, at the same pace, but Portugal gets more goals. Without Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal came out storming. Probably should have scored within the first uh, two minutes, but also Sweden had a chance right off the get-go. So this was a really exciting starting uh, period. They get the goal uh, through uh, Bernardo Silva in the 21st after Jota assist. And then kind of the pressure of Portugal has been building and building, building, lets a little, little bit off. Sweden can hold them at bay. 
still Jota makes it 2-0 and then he gets his second goal of Oslo a little bit later make it 3-0 for Portugal with a resounding victory and was it nice to see Portugal back with green pants I'm not so crazy about the side strapping and all this but uh, red shirts and green pants is just wonderful this is the Portugal look that I crave and that I know I absolutely loved that one um, England Denmark First of all, both teams playing in their away jerseys, yeah, commercial reasons. Second, I am not so sold on this blue away jersey by England. Um, it is weird because I heard first, I, I hear kind of conflicting things. When, I, when they switch to the game, it always seems like Denmark has having chances. But then in the game says, yeah, that England is well in the game. And maybe it was rather even until Harry Maguire combusts. I mean, already the first yellow was... Um, yeah, a dark yellow, let's put it that way, because he comes from behind. And then the second one is just a stupid tackle in, mid in midfield and he gets himself sent off. Um, Maguire is definitely not on the height of his game at the moment. Uh, and then two minutes uh, later, a miscommunication between um, Pickford and Carl Walker make Carl Walker kind of uh, try to get to, to the ball, but at the same time hitting, um, hitting Michael Delaney. Um, it's one of those penalties, yes, by the rules. I found it rather stupid because I, I had to really watch this two or three times in replay and even now in the morning to be convinced, yeah, you can give a penalty, but it just doesn't feel quite right to me. Eriksen, who of course played in Wembley again, had his 100th cap. Uh, slams it into the net and then in the second half England actually had two or three good chances uh, then Denmark stopped attacking right around the hour mark and probably England would have deserved an equalizer but um, unlike England Denmark has a goalkeeper you know, with Kasper Schmeichel and also good goal defender I see Simon Kier very late um, just thwarts the chance by running backward and heading it out Belgium gets a rather messy 2-1 win over Iceland. Iceland was, you know, I was a little bit piling on Iceland last time, time around, although I mean it from come, 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 from, from, from the good side. But Iceland was really well in that game with Belgium. Gave Belgium a game and it needed Lukaku, uh, who got the first goal and then a penalty to overcome Iceland, who had, uh, through Severson, an equalizer and had some chances early on. But this 2-1 kind of then settled Belgium and Belgium, who had not the greatest of international breaks. I mean, this was the first win, they had a win-loss draw. And that's why they kind of went down here uh, behind France already in the European ranking. Uh, rather curious, I have to say, uh, how Belgium, you know, they got the job done. Uh, they are the better team, we know all that, but I, I still, Iceland probably would have deserved a draw out of that one. Then the other big game was Italy in the Netherlands, which was, uh, you know, the game in Amsterdam was fully Italy controlling the Netherlands. And they tried to do similarly, uh, but this time it was much more even. Uh, the Netherlands came out more attacking and it was a very even game that ebbed and flowed back and forth. In the 60th minute, Barella plays a wonderful through uh, ball, uh, you know, from the outside, kind of curling across the defenders uh, into Lorenzo Pellegrini's path, who can pull it away 1 0. But just 10 minutes later, um, the Dutch get an e equal because the Italians cannot clear and uh, it kind of falls to uh, Van, Van der Beek, who roofs it in there. Um, I actually thought that probably the Netherlands in the second half had a little bit more of the game, uh, but also Italy had a good chance through Immobile. But I have to say, uh, what's wrong with the uh, Dutch jerseys? Either the lighting was totally off, but it just seemed more pink than orange to me, uh, at least on my TV. Um, it also, although uh, I like orange with blue, with a little bit of blue, or the other way around, blue with a, a little bit of orange, um, them playing like that against each other, although I don't mind the com combination, it was a little bit jarring. I, I think the jerseys, especially the Dutch jerseys, looked totally, totally off. And we will see this draw was exactly what Poland needed. Uh, Poland also needed a little bit of a red card um, against Arme Hocic um, to kind of get eased into the game. Then um, 
and that was already a 15 minutes set the tone. Lewandowski missed the sitter, uh, he gets the first goal in the 40th and Linity in stoppage time after Lewandowski assist makes it 2-0 and in the 52nd Lewandowski makes it 3-0 and Poland cruising. This was a huge win for Poland as we will see because they are now top of the table. Uh, didn't much see much of Finland's 1-0 win over Ireland and also Wales-Bulgaria. Uh, Wales gets another relatively late goal against Bulgaria. Norway, Northern Ireland also didn't see much except that there was uh, the only goal for Norway was an own goal through Dallas. Which, yeah, I thought if Northern Ireland can g get something out of uh, no Norway would be great for Austria. Austria only won 1-0 in Romania. Uh, it should have been more. They hit twice the bar had many chances, uh, controlled the game. And I have, have to say the black jersey, although uh, it should be a little bit more red, red, red in there, and the crest should be decent, not the new logo, but yeah, I don't want to rant again. Um, I do have to say Austria totally deserved, and the, the whole black look, that looked fine. Austria should have gone with a lead in, in, in the half. They were then lucky uh, to there was a goal um, by Romania that was ruled out because the second to last pass, there was potentially an offside and then right after there, Baumgartner uh, hits the ball and it just goes a little bit wide. Uh, Baumgartner also in the second half, I mean, when he thunders um, the shot, the goalkeeper can get a hand on it and then it deflects on, on, onto the bar. The first uh, bar was a header by Gregoric who, who bounces like the like in Wembley 66, a little bit before the line, uh, more clear than it was in 66. So yeah, it was then, after Baumgans is shopping in the 76, it gets the 1-0. I actually, personally, but I don't, I hope it will not come into play. I would have liked if Austria makes a second one, because then we will have won the head-to-head -head against Romania, because Romania has three away goals from the game in Klagenfurt, not, not too, too long ago. Uh, Russia, Hungary, 0-0 was kind of a surprising result to Bidwaza, but I didn't see much of it. I saw, they showed quite a lot of Turkey, Serbia. Yeah, uh, German channel and those two uh, nations have lots of people in the German-speaking world. Uh, Turkey was maybe more in control, but then Serbia uh, got the lead through Milinkovic Savic, a nicely headed goal in the 22nd. And then Serbia was suddenly the better team. Um, and they actually then earn a penalty in the 49th minute and yeah, earn. This was one of those, I thought maybe before when um, the, the, when the um, uh, attacker was stopped, that maybe there you could have given a penalty, but then the ball falls out and there's a scramble for the ball where Milinkovic Savic runs in uh, the Turkish defender just is Maybe he gets the ball first, but at the same time hits Milinkovic Savic and he, of course, takes that fall and without VAR and, and so on. Uh, it's, yeah, I thought you can definitely tell Milinkovic Savic is playing in Italy. 2-0, meet me, the region of and you think every, everything's fine? No, Chalanoglu after uh, Karaman uh, assist. Get, make, 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 make the 1-2 in the 57th and then uh, the Turks want to have, have a penalty, but Play continues and Jalanoglu uh, lobs the ball over the server defense to Tufan, makes it 2 2 at this time. Then I thought maybe the uh, Turks will not win it, but um, all their attack, I think it was more the Serbs server that had, had, had a chance, especially after Yilmaz then got sent and off in stoppage time. And then Kolarov had a um, free kick, and you know how Kolarov is quite well, but it ends 2 2. A result that helps definitely more Turkey than Serbia, but I think Serbia holds now the head to head between those two. So that's also interesting to note. Scotland wins against the Czechs. Yes, I think the Czechs are thoroughly hit by Corona, and that helps us because they get a goal in the sixth minute. The Czechs had many chances to equalize, but on the other side also the Scots uh, hit the bar. So, um, yeah, I we have to get used to Scotland be playing next time around in League A, which in a way does not compute. But I think they are lucky. They are also, also lucky because the Slovaks are really at the end of the line. Yes, they had a 2-0 lead at the halftime uh, through Hamšík, very sneaky shot, and Muck, but then 
Sahavi with a hat trick in the second half turns it all around and gives Israel a shock lead. Slovakia will play in League C. Slovakia really not not looking good, but then they're in the playoff final uh, against Northern Ireland. I don't think that Slovakia, from what I've seen in the Nations League, they don't really deserve to be there. Just for completeness sakes, because I have not seen anything from this. No, actually it's not true. Lithuania, Albania ended 0-0, Belarus, Kazakhstan 2-0. Stony Armenia 1 1. I saw Georgia had a lead against North Macedonia, who were a man uh, who were a man down, but they get uh, through a penalty. I think it was very late equalized, and that's a player final. And both of them have played uh, draws in both games in the in Nations League. Greece disappointing 0 0 against Kosovo, and Slovenia rather convincingly 4 0 over Moldova. So, yeah. That was the Nations League break. We have now the following standings. As I said, in Group A1, Poland is now ahead of Italy and the Netherlands and are even the odds on favorites to uh, go to the final four. Might change quickly because we have now Italy playing Poland in the next round. So uh, going to be interesting there. Uh, it's very, very tight and it's only Bosnia that seems to be uh, more in the way going down. Uh, Iceland is more or less relegated. Uh, Belgium, Denmark, in England, very close together, but I think the quality of Belgium will shine through in that one. But uh, Denmark, very, very dangerous. Now, Portugal, France, Croatia. I, Portugal is probably the most underrated team at the moment in Europe. And that despite them having won the Euros and the initial Nations League, I really think that Portugal can do damage at the next Euros as well. And they probably will win this group because I trust them to beat. Uh, I mean, Croatia away is a tricky tie, but I actually trust um, Portugal to get something there and then to take out a uh, draw against France. And if Portugal can play without Ronaldo, they are actually, funnily enough, a much more fun side to watch. Uh, Spain uh, is still whole, holding on to the lead against Germany and Ukraine. It's a very uh, tight group. I think Switzerland is gone there. League B. In B1, Austria and Norway head-to-head. -head. Austria holds the head-to-head. -head. And the last game is between Austria and Norway. The next round, Austria has now two home, home games to kind of seal the deal. And finally get promotion, which they should have gotten a long time ago. Scotland, as I said, we have to get used to that. I personally think the Czechs are a much better team than the Scots, but you know, Corona really did not do them favor and Slovakia is most likely going down. Russia and Hungary, one of them will go up. I'm very surprised by the Russians and Serbia, Turkey. That's that's very, very, very tight. I just I think by pure talent, Serbia is at least the second best team in there, if not the best team but they don't get the results at the moment, especially in Nations League. So uh, let's see, I do trust that they can uh, get po take points off Russia and Hung Hungary, but also the Turks with their never say die attitude. Wales and Finland will fight for the top spot there. I think Wales having a clear advantage. Um, Bulgaria, as I said, is already, yes. Um, I think Bulgaria will go down, although Ireland is also not looking great, also Corona. Luxembourg leads League C, Montenegro, Azerbaijan, then North Macedonia and Georgia. Uh, they are kind of a ma uh, match to each other La lately. Slovenia now holds the advantage over Greece because Greece only made this 0 0 against Kos uh, the Kosovo. And then the super tight group uh, between Belarus, Lithuania, Albania is a little bit now uh, opened up, but we have to see how this develops. Uh, Belarus now in the driver's seat. I still think that Albania is the best team in there. Faroe Islands will go to League C and probably also Gibraltar. Now, that was it uh, for this uh, international break. We have it soon coming. We have three weeks now pause with a lot of club action. It's going to be boom, 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 boom. And there's at least for me a little breather with the international break. Uh, it's going to be crazy. Um, and we have to see how the whole Corona situation De, uh, develops because that has me also quite worried because the numbers are going up everywhere to be honest anyway let me know what you watched and what you thought about the games um, as I said I always enjoy the international break unlike many others but yeah let's see how club soccer comes comes back with a great weekend I think I will have to do a, a little preview video there give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon
Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel because it will keep you updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.